Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today for episode 5 of 5 on Waves. We've spent most of this series talking about waves in the ocean, and we spent a little bit talking about how waves can be built and how they're made. We've even talked a bit about how to find them if you're a surfer, which is really cool, so make sure you check out those episodes. But today we're going to make this even crazier. For example, can you weaponize a wave? Like, think about it this way. If tsunamis are so destructive, and we know that it may only be a two-foot amplitude with a, you know, one-hour period, could we produce that with some kind of artificial means? Like a bomb? During World War II, the U.S. military tried this. They tried to make something called a tsunami bomb. No, not a band from Petaluma. It's, it's, it's tsunami bomb. The top secret project was codenamed Project SEAL. And the hope was to create a 33-foot wave that would inundate a coastal city. It makes sense during World War II, Japan being such a small island nation with a number of islands that it was controlling in the Pacific theater, it would make sense to be able to drop a bomb off the coast, wipe out the enemy, and then be able to move in. The idea was if they couldn't use a nuclear bomb or they couldn't figure it out, then they could use something like this. And it was developed in cooperation with New Zealand authorities. Many tests were conducted around New Zealand to see if the weapon was even viable. And according to a New Zealand author of a book on military follies called Secrets and Treasures by, his name is Ray Waru, uh, it actually did work. Presumably, if the atomic bomb had not worked as well as it did, we might have been tsunamiing people, he writes. If you want to create a tsunami wave, you use several bombs, according to this research, around 10 bombs with more than 2,200 tons of explosives. If you array them in a line some five miles offshore and then you detonate them, you can build a tsunami synthetically. The military operation was created in 1944, and they figured it out by blowing up coral reefs around the Pacific Islands, which sucks. What's up, U.S. military? Why are you doing that? Obviously, the program was abandoned because we didn't really need to use it, and New Zealand's authorities continued to produce reports on Project SEAL tsunami bombs into the 1950s, well after the war ended. But we're also using waves not just as weapons. We're using waves to kind of speak to us about the universe around us. In the same way that Kyle, who was saying earlier that you can use waves to read the ocean and understand what's going on, even way far out to sea, thousands, tens of thousands of miles away, we can do that as well in space. When you're talking about waves, you're basically talking about everything around us, right? We've talked about waves here on this podcast where you can use waves for renewable energy. You can check that series out as well. But gravitational waves, which are waves of gravity, can help us prove the theory of what's called cosmic inflation. The idea that space is expanding. They call that inflation. So at the Big Bang, obviously everything was a tiny little point, infinitesimally dense and infinitesimally small, and it exploded. And when things explode, they move out, right? And when things are moving out, you could call that inflation. That's where this name comes from. This is the beginning of everything, right? And scientists have spent thousands and thousands of hours <laughs> trying to figure this out. I mean, one could argue they're probably in the man years category at this point. And trying to find evidence of the Big Bang Theory is it's extremely difficult. I mean, we've got the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the furthest we can see. It's the farthest thing in our universe, and we've mapped that. But to really understand the Big Bang, we have to see the waves of energy that it was creating in gravity. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, when something happens violently, it creates ripples in space-time. So, say, two supermassive black holes pull themselves toward each other and finally slam into each other. These things are so big, so massive, and have so much gravity, they could create a gravitational wave. Also, this could happen if binary stars orbit close to the speed of light, they get too close and they speed up faster and faster and faster. The amount of energy being emitted by them becomes so vast that it creates these gravitational waves. And of course, the Big Bang <laughs> would have made these as well. But finding evidence of these waves would help explain the beginning of the universe. And these are just like waves on a beach. It's no different. The waves 
leave imprints on the sand. Gravitational waves should leave imprints on the cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang, the furthest thing out in the universe which we have mapped. And researchers are looking for gravitational waves by doing this. Now, to do that is actually really difficult. They're digging deep into the Earth, and they're putting these very sensitive pieces of equipment that can pick up a gravitational wave that's billions of years old that just happens to fly by. This is tough stuff. The Center for Astrophysics in Massachusetts developed a way of observing the cosmic microwave background radiation after years and years of research and analysis, and they found patterns that were swirling in the CMB, and supposedly those were created by gravitational waves. But we have to know what a gravitational wave looks like. Now, if you think about it, just like the waves in the ocean, over time, gravitational waves, which were used to be high energy, have spread out. Their period has gotten larger and larger. Now imagine the period of something that's as wide as a galaxy, maybe as wide as multiple galaxies. You have to be able to identify that and know what you're seeing as just a tiny bit of it passes through your detector underneath a continent here on Earth. It's really difficult to do. But if we can figure that out, we can fundamentally understand the universe better in the same way that Kyle can fundamentally understand the ocean better. I mean, these things are humongous. They were created at the beginning of the universe, and their period, I mean, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but these are astronomical distances. And we're trying to pick it up on Earth. And the period could be wider than our whole planet. That's pretty difficult to grasp. So not only are waves fun to ride, they're fun to talk about, and they're super complicated and mathematical, but they could tell us how the universe is put together. I mean, string theory is essentially the idea that vibrations are creating everything that we're experiencing all throughout the entire universe, and that's all waves too. So we're not gonna get into that now, but maybe we'll get into it later on an episode of Test 2 Plus. So make sure you subscribe so that you get all of our series and you can pick up all the different things that we decide to talk about. And let us know down in the comments how you felt about this series and if you have any suggestions for future ones. If you don't want to go to the comments, come over and find us on Twitter. You can find the show at TestTube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus this week. We hope you enjoyed it.